uh, the Calgary Stampeders and football in Calgary in general is very well represented in the 2020 CFL Hall of Fame class. Uh, we have some players and builders that have spent much of their time with Calgary in their respective football careers. So that's what I'll talk about in this video here. Hi there, it's Brian Hornby here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel here. And I figured I got a couple of relics here that I'm wearing that is appropriate to talk about in this video here. As a couple Calgary Stampede greats are going into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame for the 2020 class here. However, given what's been going on here, I guess the official ceremony would have been scheduled next month here in the football game in Hamilton, where the CFL Hall of Fame is. It will be postponed until 2021 here, and at the end of the video I might talk about some players and maybe another Calgary Stampede great that will be inducted into 2021 class so that it will be kind of a big Calgary Stampeders reunion. As you know, you always strive for having a great football career, win championships here, but you don't necessarily, you know, strive to have your head forever enshrined in the Hall of Fame here, but there's definitely some well-deserved players here. So for first the hat here, Henry Burris headlines the uh, 2020 CFL class here, and he was the Grey Cup MVP in 2008 here, so I got this hat signed by Henry himself here, and current general manager of the Calgary Stampeders, and used to be head coach, John Huffnagel, who coached, you know, Henry Burris and the Calgary Stampeders in 2008 to a Grey Cup win, and I had to wear my Calgary Stampeders 2001 era white jersey here, and I got named Brett Childress, the big chill here. He also is going to the Hall of Fame here. And also we'll go over the other players and builders that are in the 2020 CFL class here. So congratulations to all of them. But Henry Burris and John Huffnagel definitely headlined the class this year. And Henry Burris got in on the first ballot here. And you could say this is kind of also fitting that Henry Burris and then a couple weeks ago I talked about Jerome McGinley on him being into the Hockey Hall of Fame as part of the 2020 class first bell here that, you know, as a Calgary sports fan here, we were definitely fortunate to have Henry Burris and Jerome McGinley at the same time as faces of the franchises here. Being as more of a personality or as a fan, I definitely considered Jerome McGinley my man crush here, but as a player... Henry Burris actually he got me excited and mad at the same time just by his play, but as a person, he definitely was top, top notch there and definitely is a first ballot Hall of Famer there, but his accomplishments definitely weren't here. So let's go over the whole class of the twenty twenty CFL Hall of Fame here. And I say Calgary is definitely well represented here. So we'll go on alphabetical order here. So the first player is Clyde Brock here who actually did not play with the uh, Calgary Stampeders in his career here. However, he did spend 12 seasons as an offensive lineman, just like Fred Childers, all with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And he was on the 1966 team, which was the first team, that the first time that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders won the Grey Cup here. He played 169 regular season games and 27 playoff games, plus four Grey Cup games. So it's definitely impressive. To have a long career as an offensive lineman here is it's definitely a thankless job, an important but thankless job in football here, because you're definitely you gotta protect your biggest asset, like Henry Burris, for example. Your quarterback here, as they need to be on their feet looking for the play or running themselves here. He was an okay all-star for four consecutive seasons from 1966 to 1969 as an offensive tackle. Was a Western All-Star for five straight years, 965-969. And he was on the uh, 1966 team that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders won the Grey Cup over the then Ottawa Rough Riders. Two words there. So that's the first uh, player that's in the class here. And he also was on the Grey Cup teams from 1967, 1969, 1972, where Saskatchewan was on the 
wrong end of it there, but he definitely uh, was uh, part of the other three Canadian Duck Ds that were in the Hall of Fame, where Jack Anderson, Albinic, and Ted Ernest, that were definitely a strong offensive line for the Saskatchewan Rufers back then. So he definitely had to wait a long time to get into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame here. As he definitely predates me, so I definitely don't know uh, how great a player was, but he was inducted into their Rough Riders Plaza of Honor back in 1995 here, and he wore number 67 for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, so he definitely uh, graduated to him. He also was born in Los Angeles, California here, and he played at Utah State, and he was selected back to the, with the Chicago Bears in 1962, and he and he was drafted by the Houston Oilers in 1962 in the American Football Draft. So there was two leagues then, the National Football League and the American Football League before they merged here. And he also played two seasons in the NFL with the Dallas Cowboys and the San Francisco 49ers before he came to Regina and made his career back in 1963 here. So congratulations to Clyde Brock here. So the next player going... Alphabetical here is the Big Chill, the jersey that I'm wearing here, Fred Childress. He played 13 seasons in the Canadian Football League. Definitely impressive to play football that long in any position here, other than the kicker. I mean, not mean the slight kickers here, but uh, when it's the nature of the game here. He played in four different teams, and he played in 185 regular season games and 14 playoff games, including three Grey Cups, where he won two of them here with the Calgary Stampeders. And... 1998 and in 2001 here with when we wore these jerseys however we were on the wrong end of it in 1999 here actually he did start his career back when we had remember the Shreveport Pirates in 1994 here and then he was with the Birmingham Barracudas in 1995 there when the CFL was briefly in the U.S. here and then after when the team folded we picked him up in 1996 and he was with the Calgary Stampeders from 1996 till 2003 here, where he had his best years in his CFL career here, before he went on with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, where he played there for another three seasons from 2004 to 2006 there. So he definitely was a long career as a right guard, and I would say he is one of the best offensive linemen to ever play for the Calgary Stampeders here. And mention he was uh, on the two teams that we won in 1998 and 2001 here. Western Conference champion in 1999, where we lost to the Hamilton Tiger Cats that year. The uh, say here, he was also recognized as CFL All Star in 1996, 97, and 98 as a guard there. And then he was selected as a Southern All Star back when there was a Northern and Southern division here when he was with the uh, Birmingham Barracudas in 1995 here. And then he was a Western All Star in 97, 98, and 2000. And a Western All Star tackle in 1997. Let's just say he was definitely great at his position here. And he also played as a Canadian, he was a CFL Football League Players Association All Star in 1995. And then he won four straight years in 2000 here. With the exception of the All Star selection in 95 when he was with Birmingham there. So uh, all his other selections when he was an All Star was with Mike Irish Stan Peters here. And then he was the first Calgary Stampeder, now that won the most outstanding offensive lineman in 1998, and he was a runner-up for the guard in 1997 to center when it was Mike Kuzak of the Toronto Argonauts here. And then he also received the DeMarco Breckett Memorial Trophy as the most outstanding offensive lineman in the Western Division in 1997-98 here. Since then, we've also had Ben Archibald and Brett Jones have also won the most outstanding offensive lineman here, but since that award was created, Fred Childress was the first player to win it as a Calgary Stampeder here. And he was the team nominee for the most outstanding player and most outstanding lineman in 1994 with the Shriver Pirates here. Well, uh, they weren't a great team there. So if you're on any of your offensive lineman as your most outstanding player, it tells you he didn't really have a good team then. And then, obviously, he was nominated for that for Calgary in that 798 and 2000 here. And he played his college ball at the University of Arkansas here. So I know he's from Little Rock, Arkansas here. And he was the second team All-Star American. Probably pro World football for weekly. And then he was selected in the second round back in 1989 with the Cincinnati Bengals here. And then I remember 
after 1998, he did actually try out with the Dallas Cowboys, then wasn't successful there, and then he gladly came back to the Calgary Stampeders, and I'm going to say he definitely had a nice long career, mostly with the Calgary Stampeders, and he actually makes Calgary his home now after his playing days. So congratulations to the Big Joe, and uh, we're out to wear his jersey, number 68, and I bought this white one because I, I like this ultimate logo here that we had when they first came out. That I like I like that logo, so that's why I got this jersey here. So now another player that uh, I would say was more recognized for his collegiate ball is Greg Ferreira, who was a quarterback who actually played his ball with the University of Calgary Dinos from 1979 to 1983, where he won the Vanier Cup in 1983 when 83 when the Dinos won the Vanier Cup that year, and he was the first uh, university player. Uh, from University of Calgary player to win the Het Creighton Award, which is the Canadian version of the uh, of the Heisman Trophy in 1983, and then he was the top player in Canadian used their ball there. And then he uh, actually set a record in the University Ball back in 1983, where he threw 627 yards against the Saskatchewan Huskies. March, which still stands as the end of the 2019 season here, so he's like Matt Dunnigan here. Have a passing game record that might be tough to break here. Barra completed his college career with 611 out of 1,200 passes with a complete expression of only 51% here, but he definitely had success where he played for 8,401 yards, 63 touchdown passes, and then he left Calgary after 1983 with uh, 8,401 passing yards, 61 touchdowns, are both CEIU records here. And then he had uh, another record in 1982 where he had 55 passing attempts in the game when he played against the University of Manitoba here, and he threw for 21 touchdown passes in 1983, where he was the University of Calgary Male Athlete of the Year here. He actually is from uh, Red Deer, Alberta here, so he's an Albertan and a Canadian here. And he also had some kicking duties too, as I mentioned here in the Canadian Hawk Football Hall of Fame article here, that he set a football record, school record, with a 52-yard field goal on 1982 against Saskatchewan here. His 93 yard punt in 1982 was the first as Manitoba still holds as the seventh longest in uh, Canadian football university history. That still stands as of 2019 here. And he's sixth all time leading scorer where he graduated in Calgary here. So uh, I said Calgary in 1983, we defeated the Queen's University Golden Bear, Golden Gales 31 21 to win the Vanity Cup here. So that's where. I'm going to say he was inducted more as his collegiate ball year. He actually did play with the uh, Calgary Stampeders. He was drafted by the Calgary Stampeders as a quarterback here. He played two seasons there, but he didn't have a as great of a CFL career to warrant going in the Hall of Fame. He also did play with the BC Lions and the Empton Eskimos in five seasons here. But he's definitely in for what he's done at the collegiate level here. And he was inducted in the University of Calgary Athletic Hall of Fame back in 1985, and his number 17 is retired by the university. And he's the first student athlete to ever receive that honor. So uh, congratulations to Greg here. So uh, Greg Varva is in more for what he's done at his collegiate level here, but he also did play for the Calgary Stampeders here. And then here's the headline here, Emmy Burris, who was in on the first ballot here. He played 18 seasons in the Canadian Football League. He actually first, and he played in 277 regular season games and 17 playoff games, and he did actually start off as the third-string quarterback with the Calgary Stampeders in 1997 behind Jeff Garcia and now current head coach Dave Dickinson here. So we definitely had a deep quarterback class there, and that was definitely quarterbacks after following Doug Flutie here. So he played with Calgary in 1997 and 1999 here, so he was on the 1998 Grey Cup team as a third-string quarterback here, but he definitely showed some promise in 1999. Or that season, Calgary was having, it was something, in 1989-99 was a strange year in Calgary. The Flames, back in the 98-99 season there, had to dress eight goalies. And uh, that, and then the next season, Calgary wasn't healthy at quarterback here because Dickinson got hurt. I know we found Mike McCoy, who actually is the offensive coordinator, as I know, with the Denver Broncos, I believe. But he also did spend some time as head coach in my San Diego Chargers here. But Eric Burris showed some flashes in the pan there before he got hurt, before Mike McCoy had to come in and play for Calgary 
during 1999 there, and also we were down with Dave Dickinson here. But then he also went to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders from 2000, and then in 2003 and 4 there, because he also did try his luck with the uh, NFL with, I believe, the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears here. But he was a Saskatchewan Rough Rider between that time here. And then I think the rivalry heat up a lot more when between Calgary and Saskatchewan here, when Harry Burris was a free agent. After when we got through the F Troop days there and got local ownership here, Calgary definitely made a big splash in free agency here. When we signed the two biggest free agents coming into the 2005 season, including Henry Burris and Jermaine Copeland. So uh, and that definitely heat up the rivalry there. And I know he, Henry's definitely loved to be hated in Regina here, but he's definitely, when he was back with the Calgary Stampeders from 2005 to 2011 here, he was great cup MVP, and he is, all, he is the all-time yardage passing leader in franchise history here. He did surpass Doug Flutie at the time when he did it, but Bo is actually now second in all-time passing leader right now with the Calgary Stampeders here. After 2011 here, when we decided to move on, he did got traded to the Hamilton Tiger Cats, where he played two seasons there, and he had, he had great seasons with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, despite the fact they didn't have a good team. Especially in 2012 and 2013, he did lead the uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats to the Great Cup there, but then it was on the wrong end of it there in Saskatchewan, Finn and Lee, and definitely was razzed there, and then he finished his career with the Ottawa Red Blacks when Ottawa came back into the CFL from 2014 to 16 there, where uh, he, en he ended off as a champion there, where he did beat the Calgary Stampeders in 2016 in that upset there, so he does have Three great cup rings here, and yeah, it does mention that he spent two years with the Chicago Bears in 2001-2 there, so that's why there was that gap between 2000-2003 there, where he had two different stints with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders here. Other accolades with Henry Burris, he was recognized as CFL All-Star in 2010-2015. He was an Eastern All-Star when he was an Ottawa Red Black in 2015. A Western All-Star when he was with the Calgary in 2005-8-10 and 10 here, and he was picked as the Hey, Football League Players Association All-Star in 2006 when he was with Calgary, 13 with uh, Hamilton, and 2015 with Ottawa here. And he was honored with the Tom Pate Memorial Award in 2015 presented to the CFL player with a unique combination, outstanding sportsmanship and dedication to the community. And that's why I kind of said in the opening there that uh, Calgary was fortunate to have Henry Burris and Jerome McGinn at the same time in the community there. And I mentioned here he was part of Calgary's breakup wins from 1998 and 2008 here with the SAT here. He was on the team when we lost in uh, 1999, and then he was on the team when they lost to Hamilton as the Tiger Cat 2013, but then he won it in his final game in 2016 here. And then he was the Grey Cup MPP in 2008 and in 2016 there, so he has three Grey Cups. He was the MVP in two of them there. And then he played... Uh, 220, he started 229 games and he played a record of 108 wins, 108 loss, 118 wins, 188 losses, and three ties here in the CFL. He retired with 63,639 passing yards, which ranks him third in CFL history there. And he threw for 373 touchdown passes with 227 interceptions and a passing efficiency rating of 93.6 there. So he definitely has a, you know, a lot of touchdown passes, but he definitely had some interceptions there. That's where that Hank Frank thing, that's how I remember him as a Calgary Stan Peter. That he had some Hank and Frank moments, but I definitely still thankful for what he's done in the CFL. And he's still, assuming we ever get games again here, he is on the TSN panel there. And definitely like his insights there. And I think he does have the makings to be a coach if he wanted to. And his personality... He had 18 games where he threw for over 400 yards, and 93 games where he threw for over 300 yards here. So if you were playing fantasy then, he definitely was someone you could take to the bank to give you 300 yards passing here. He completed uh, 4,649 out of 7,452 passing attempts for a passing completion percentage of 62.4% here. And he's retired as seventh all-time playoff passing leader with 3,566 yards and a completion percentage of 60.2% here, and is the sixth all-time passing leader in Grey Cups with 1,681 yards and a completion percentage of 67.7% there. I know he had a big 400-yard game there 
when we when he lost when he beat the uh, Calgary Stampeders there. He led the CFL in passing yards in three seasons in 2012, 2013, and 2015 years. So he definitely led the league in passing towards the end of his career here. In 2012, he had 5,367 yards. That was with Hamilton. In 2013, well, also with Hamilton, he had 4,927 4, yards. And then in 2015, listen to this number. He had 5,693 yards there. And that was towards the end of his career here. And then he was the most outstanding player award in 2010 with Calgary. There was debate that uh, he probably should have won it in 2008 there. Maybe that was a the makeup there because I felt 2008... With the Grey Cup, he had a better year, but uh, he eventually got it with Calgary and then in 2015 with Ottawa there. He won the Jeff Nishkin Trophy as the Western Division nominee for the most outstanding player in 2008 and 10, and the Terry Everson Trophy as the Eastern Division nominee in 2015 here. So uh, definitely uh, was a lot of uh, accolades here. And Burris was the runner-up for Hall of Fame, was the runner-up back in 2008 by Hall of Fame inductee quarterback. Anthony Calvillo in 2008 for the Eastern nominee there. Definitely, that's who is the all-time passing leader here. So, yeah, definitely a lot to talk about with Henry Burris here. I know despite, the, you know, you go through the ups and downs with him, and he definitely plays with a heart in his sleeve. He's definitely a scrambler here. Where uh, I'm not too sure where I would put him as best quarterbacks that the Calgary Stampeders have ever had here. I mean, keep in mind I wasn't around for Jerry Keeling or Pete Lisk here. I say Flutie. And I definitely am the most nostalgic for Doug Flutie being the best quarterback, I would say, to ever play in the CFL. And, and with the Calgary Stampeders, I might say right now, I would put Bo number two. Because Bo was definitely... The only thing I wish Bo could do that Flutie did was scramble when he's in trouble here. Then I actually put Jeff Garcia number three. Because he definitely played tough and he was a scrambler there. Although Jeff Garcia and Harry Burris kind of gave me the same emotions of living the ups and downs of, you know, having great and bad moments here. Then I'll put, I'll put Henry Burris number four. I would, uh, as I say, is the best quarterback that the Calgary Stampeders ever had here. But that's my opinion here. But he's definitely well-deserved, mostly with Calgary, but his body of work that he did with, uh, as well with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, despite the love hate. And he definitely put up big numbers with the Hamilton Tiger Cats and the Ottawa Red Blacks towards the end of his career where he should be Tailing down here, that's definitely impressive here. As a CFL fan, we were definitely blessed to have, uh, I mean, after Doug Flutie, I mean, Henry Burris rose it. Anthony Calvillo had a great long career. And then Ricky Ray with his time with the Edmonton Eskimos and the Toronto Argonauts here. So there's a couple more players we'll talk about or people that we'll talk about that were inducted in the Canadian Football, Football Hall of Fame here. Let's talk about off John Huffnagel here. He definitely is more known for his builder. He was a quarterback in the CFL. He played 12 seasons in the CFL with the Calgary Stampeders. He actually did play with the Stampeders. He also played with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders as a player here. However, he's definitely most known for being a builder, where he's been doing right now as had time as head coach, and now still currently with the general manager with the Calgary Stampeders. And, since when John Huffnagel took over with the Calgary Stampeders in 2008 year, we definitely have always been a great contender and one of the top teams in the league here. With his drafting, his trading, his coaching here, definitely he was a big part of it and still is today here. As he went on, after playing 12 seasons as a player, he played 15 seasons in the Canadian Football, or coached 15 seasons in the Football League. And he began as a player coach with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders back in 1987 here. And then he was an assistant coach with the Calgary Stampeders from 1990 to 1996 there. He was a quarterback's coach where he worked with uh, Doug Flutie and Jeff Garcia here. And then as head coach, eventually, he worked with Henry Burris and Bo Levi Mitchell here. So, uh, And then in between that time from 1996 to before he came back to Calgary as head coach in 2008 here, he spent some time in the NFL as a quarterback coach where he actually coached with both Mannings, Peyton, and Eli, and he was last with the New England Patriots before he went to the Calgary Stampeders where he got to spend some time with Tom Brady here. So uh, I would say he's definitely blessed as a quarterback himself. He got to work with Doug Flutie, Jeff Garcia, Henry Burris, Bully Levi Mitchell in Canada here. And then in the U.S. there, you could say he got to coach both Brady, or both 
Tom Brady and both Mannings and Eli and Peyton there. And then I say he was with the head coach for the cover Stan Peters from 2008 to 2015, here before he stepped down and gave the keys to uh, Dave Dickinson. And that's definitely another quarterback that he definitely spent some time with uh, both stints towards the end of his first stint with Calgary and towards the beginning of the second stint with Calgary there where he stepped down to be just general manager and Dave Dickinson's been head coach then then and I should also say that uh, he was also coached under Wally Bono who I would say Wally Bono the all-time winningest coach in CFL history here I would say the second best coach that the Calgary Stampeders and general manager is John Uffingle here because it says here in the next part from 2008 to 2015 as head coach here he had a record of 102 wins 41 losses and one tie here for a winning percentage of 7-12. So we won 71% of the games under John Huffnagel. Best among coaches with more than 100 games. So definitely he beat Wally Bono in that as well here. Although in the playoffs he was 6-5. But, uh, you know, it's tough to win in the playoffs here. And then he was part of the two Grey Cup teams where he coached as the Grey Cup champion in 2008 and 2014 there. Unfortunately, we were on the wrong end of it in... 2012 there, and the post rating record he was eight and six, and they say he won Grey Cups as coach in 2008, 2014, and then he also was the uh, general manager for all the, the recent Grey Cups in 2008, 2014, and 2018 year, and then he was the coach of the year, which is the NS Dukas Award, where he won the coach of the year both years that we won the Grey Cup when he was head coach in 2008. And 2014 there, and I'm going to save my ultimate memory, which John Hofnagel has got to be the speech that he gave to the Calgary Stampeders in 2008 when we were playing Montreal in Montreal there, and when he told them that we got them right where we want them. I know when I first saw that speech, I got chills as a fan, and I was ready to kick some ass. <laughs> but, and he was just, he's, he's someone who doesn't give, you know, you know exciting sound bites like during the regular season, it's all cliche in that, but that speech, it's like, it was like, wow, that was probably the best football speech of all time, and then that's just all the accolades in the CFL here, and this is probably where I'll talk about his NFL here, he began his coaching career in 1987, player coach, 1990 joined the Stampeders as a offensive coordinator under Wally Bono, and in his role, he helped guide the team to three great cups, including the championship in 1992, we did we were on the wrong end of it in 1991 and in 1995 here, but he was a part of those teams here. He's definitely, we were definitely dominant in the offense. Because we had Doug Footy, who won the most outstanding player in 1992, 93, 94. And in 95, he had the elbow tendonitis there. But then we had a guy named Jeff Garcia that took over there. And then during enough, it was first seventh season in Calgary. The team finished first in the West six times, and he helped develop, I said, Jeff Garcia there. His coaching career, career continued. He was in the Arena Football League, where he coached the New Jersey Red Dogs in 1997-98. And in 1999, he spent time in the National Football League, where he was with the Cleveland Browns in 1999. He spent two seasons as a quarterback's coach. Then he spent some time with the Indianapolis Colts in 2001. That's where he got to spend some time with Peyton Manning. In 1992, he was with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then the Super Bowl champion New England Patriots in 2003. He was where he got to spend in the Super Bowl there. Since the time with Tom Brady here, and then the next season he joined the New York Giants. So actually he was with the New York Giants. I thought he was with the Patriots, but he was with the New York Giants from 2002 or 2004 to 2006 as an offensive coordinator, where he got to spend some time with Eli Manning here. So I'm going to say he definitely had a great football career as a player, but even more as a coach, and impressive the players that he got to work with here. During his playing career, this is where I'll talk about where he actually played. He played with quarterback from 1976-1979 with Calgary, Saskatchewan. He was with Calgary 76-79 here where we had okay teams, but we just couldn't beat the powerhouse, the Edmonton Eskimos. They're still called the Eskimos as it is post here. And then he was with Saskatchewan from 1980 to 1983 as well as Winnipeg in 1987. And with the Blue Bombers in 1983 to 1986. He actually did win a great cup as a player with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in 1984. He started at Penn State University where he held a record of a starter from 21-3. 
And in 1973, he was the 14th round pick of the Denver Broncos, where he's been three seasons here. So he's definitely been all over the football map in North America here. But obviously, I'm, I'm always going to remember Joe Nuffnagel as a Calgary Stampeder. I was for all the time that he's done as coach here. So uh, those are the two headlines here. So the last person that's getting inducted in the Hall of Fame here is uh, Larry Utek here. And he has started off as a player and coach in an athletic career that's been over th more than three decades here. I think Utech played defensive back for the University of Colorado Buffaloes from 1970 to 1973. Then he went to Laurier in Waterloo, Ontario from 73 to 74. Then he was drafted by the Toronto Argonauts in 1974 and being selected as an Eastern All-Star in 1975 and 1976. He uh, was, uh, his Canadian Football League also played at the time the Montreal Alouettes, the BC Lions, and the Ottawa Rough Riders. He began his coaching career with St. Mary's University Huskies in Halifax in 1982 and as an assistant coach. UTEP began the head coach of the Huskies in 1983 and served that position until 1997 or so. Another person here that we recognize more for his collegiate time here. He was the Uni Athletic University Athletic Association Coach of the Year from 1987, 1988, 1999, 1990, 1992 year, and the Canadian Inter University Athletic Coach of the Year from 1998 and 1992 year, those two years. St. Mary's won the AUAA Championship seven times under UTEX tender with a record of 67-45. The Huskies were the Atlantic Bowl champions in 1998, 1990, and 1992, and making three appearances in the uh, Vanny Cup here. And then he was the athletic director for St. Mary's University. From 1995 to 2002 there, where the Huskies were Vanier Cup champions in 2001, 2002, and finals in 1999, reaching those finals via two Atlantic Bulls and the Churchill Bowl title. 2002, St. Mary's won the first of four, six, four of six consecutive Atlantic University Sport Conference championships in 1999 to 2004 there, as his time as an elect, athletic director there. And then it says away from the field, he had a considerable influence in the community. He was an alderman from 1994-95, a member of city council from 1995-1999 in Halifax there. He was mentored as, he mentored all Canadian quarterback David Skies at the St. Mary's where he won uh, two Russ Jackson award winners. And he was presented to the University Football Player as best accepted by the attributes of his academic, academic achievement, football skill, and citizenship. Skies were in earned the Rhodes Scholarship with the International Postgraduate Award for students to study at the University of Oxford in England there. And then the city named Larry Utech Boulevard in 2000, and Utech became a member of the Order of Canada in 2002 here. So definitely built up a great collegiate college career out in Atlantic Canada there. The Atlantic Bowl was named the Utech Bowl in 2003 there at Ralph College School in Toronto there. He attended where he attended and their track area to UTEC Memorial Field in 2004. He unfortunately passed away actually Christmas Day on 2002 there. So he's the uh, only person in this class here who's been inducted posthumously here, if I said that right here. So uh, that's quite a 2020 CFL Hall of Fame class here, but definitely a lot of Calgary flavor. Most notably with uh, Henry Burris and John Huffnagel here. We also got to throw in Greg Varvara with the University of Dallas and Brad Childress as an offensive lineman from 1996 to 2003 there. So what do you think of the 2020 CFL Hall of Fame class here? Uh, what memories do you have as a fan of all these players here? I would say uh, for the Calgary Stampeders part, I mean, Henry Burris, definitely, I would say his personality off the field and the ups and downs I dealt with him, but... It was the 2008 Great Cup win that I definitely uh, remember the most out of Henry Burris. I would put that as my ultimate highlight there. And then Fred Childers just being the steady, you know, right guard from 1996 till 2003 there. He also kind of had that Barry White voice too. And then winning the first most outstanding offensive lineman as a Calgary Stampeder in 1998. And then John Huffnagel, I mean, his body of work is still continuing on as a general manager right now, but it, it's that speech that he gave to the Calgary Stampeders in 2008 there, where he told them that we got them right where we want them, and we did win the Grey Cup in Montreal there. Calgary was the best team in the league that year, but 
we definitely didn't get the respect from, uh, you know, the media. I mean, Calgary was the best team, and I think Calgary still was hated upon because uh, we definitely had that era where we had Jermaine Copeland, Nick Lewis, and Kenyon Rambo, where uh, we had the reputation of, you know, celebrating in the end zone there, and everyone else hated that, and Calgary was great, and, and I think that was why we didn't get as much respect as we should have gotten in 2008 there, but uh, we won the Great Cup here. But speaking of one of those players that I mentioned, I think Nick Lewis. I think he should be eligible to get into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame for the 2021 class here. I would say he should be a shoo-in to go in, being the all-time reception leader as receiver here. And I keep saying for Nick Lewis, I say he is the best receiver that the Calgary Stampers have had. Only behind Alan Pitts. I say Alan Pitts is the best receiver we ever had, but Nicholas is second there. So I think he should be headlining the 2021 class here. I mean, other Calgary Stampeders that I would say definitely should be considered to get into the Hall of Fame here, but uh, we don't know if they'll ever get the call. Or I know that Joffrey Reynolds is definitely considered the all-time rushing leader, but uh, he had some off-field stuff here. Last year, John Cornish headline it and I made that video talking about the John Cornish Award here but uh, those are the obvious ones I could think of I mean we've had some pretty good players here but over the years since I've really been following the CFL and the team but you don't know if they're Hall of Fame worthy because I could think of guys like I mean Jermaine Copeland I mean is he good enough or I know we've had Canadian players like uh, Mark O'Glaughlin the kicker although there was definitely a tender towards the end that kind of soured on, but that was during the F Troop days. He's not in the Hall of Fame yet. Maybe Vince Danielson, I don't know. Or even a Travis Moore. I mean, those are great stuff I could think of right now, and I know eventually, I mean, Tra Charleston Hughes definitely should be considered. I mean, I'm surprised Will Johnson, who's the also co-leader of Sachs Leader, that isn't in the Hall of Fame yet. His name is on the Wall of Fame, but... Uh, there's definitely some other players that I think eventually well, should get into the Canadian Football League Hall of Fame. And i not, yeah, I was about to say, I think that's where I'll close it out here. And I'll share a few pictures about that I have with a few of these players and people. that Because uh, I do have a picture of me with John Huffnagle and Henry Bruce here. I don't have all my Fred Childers, but uh, I think I'll have those pictures at the end of this video here. So... What do you think of everything here? And congratulations to everyone who was inducted into the Canadian Football League Hall of Fame here. Definitely was a lot to take in, but uh, you got to give everyone their due here. So anyway, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey, home of Flames, Sidman, Ruffinex, and Stan Peters, which that's what I was mostly talking about in this video here. I mostly talk Calgary sports and other sports stories that are interesting to me on this channel here, but I also do personal vlogs, attempt to comedy, and I do also do share my experience I'm on the road around sport event here. So if that all sounds like you'd be interested to watch, do follow along with this Calgary Sports Fans journey. You know what you need to do. Just make sure you hit like, subscribe. I also have my other social media links down in the description below here for other ways you can follow me and maybe get any updates on my channel here or any other planned content that I plan to post on this channel here. And here we are. I mean, we're still in this global pandemic here, but uh, there is promise of scheduled games to come up here. That pretty soon I'm going to be doing some more uh, Calgary Flames game recaps because there will actually be games to talk about here. And we got the upcoming play-in series of the Big Jets there. So I'm planning on getting my notes together for that. And also I've been doing my Remember the Calgary series here. And I plan to maybe get a couple more episodes out here coming up here as we're approaching the August long weekend. And I am taking a few extra days off for it, so I'll probably will bang out those videos during that weekend as well here, and then hopefully, uh, you know, maybe, just maybe, there might be some football this year, but we don't know that yet. So that's all I put on my channel here. So as I say here, go Stamps Go, and I'll see you in the next video here.